Now, DaVinci Resolve loves to use the GPU, but what about the CPU? Should you go with the Intel CPU, AMD CPU, Threadripper CPU, or spend absolute fortune on an Intel Xeon one? In fact, actually, the Threadripper is sometimes more expensive. But which one should you get? Is it worth paying more? Is it not? Some of them are six cores, some of them are 64 cores or 96 cores. Well, there's a high chance that you're paying more than you should for your CPU and you should actually consider some alternatives. So in this video, you're gonna know which CPU is the absolute best for DaVinci Resolve for video editing. Let's go. This video is sponsored by Motion Array. Check them out in the video description below or learn more later on in this video. Now, I am using Puget Bench for testing this. And on the screen, you can see extended overall, standard overall, 4K, 8K, media score, GPU effects, as well as fusion score. Now, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper in there and you can see quite a few CPUs tested in there. Before I can show you the actual results, there's one very important, in fact, most important not. You might be using DaVinci Resolve free version, not the studio version. All the benchmarks in this video are the studio version. And if you're looking to get more performance out of your CPU, highly recommend upgrading your free version to the paid studio version which is a one-time purchase and you can get some of these licenses online from quite cheap so feel free to scour the web ebay places like that and that's going to give you the most performance compared to upgrading your whole new system so if you're using a free version that's what i would do first and if you're wondering what's my test bench setup then you can find them linked in the description below as well as all of the cpus that i'm talking about in this video if you want to pick any of these up or build yourself the best bank for buck create a pc then there's build guides as well as all of the cpu links in the description below where you can just you know get them i appreciate it if you do get it because that helps this channel keep going and you know making helpful content like this coming your way for free. First, let's take a look at the extended overall score. And here you can see that actually the best CPU that I have tested for DaVinci Resolve is the AMD Threadripper 7970X, which is a 32 core CPU, but it's got quite a hefty price tag. The interesting thing what you can see here is that the 64 core CPU, that's uh, quite a bit further down, about 20% slower than the 32 core, which means that 64 cores, DaVinci Resolve doesn't quite know what to do with them all. You also see two 14900K scores, as you can see, the second and the third one. One of them has a 6400 in brackets behind it, which means a higher RAM speed. I have tested all of these CPUs with their stock IMC spec from the factory. So for Intel 12th gen, it's 4,800 megatons per second. For 13th gen, it's 56. For 14th gen, it's also 56. For Ryzen 9, is 5200 megatransfers per second that's just to implement some of these speeds to their workflow now that doesn't mean that you can't get faster ram it just means that you might not be able to run them at the advertised xmc speed when you're going with 12th gen and 64 for example you might be able to but there's a silicon lottery and that's out of the factory spec but just to showcase how much performance we can get when going with a faster ram speed here's some of these results now the lowest to the absolute top extended overall score we have about 25 percent which means that the 12600k is very impressive cpu and cost very very little interestingly the 7600x which is a six core cpu the 12600k has more it's got e cores mp cores but it's got six p cores is actually slower but at the same time the 12600k is very very affordable so if you want to build a system that has quite a bit of upgradability from 12600k all the way to 14900k that is the same platform so you can get up to 25 percent increase in the same platform without changing any other component apart from the cpu and you might get even more when going with a faster ram interestingly the i7 13700k and above are actually faster than any of the ryzen cpus apart from Threadripper. Interestingly also the 14700K which is a newer chip gets a little bit of a lower score than the 13700K about 6% slower which is I'm not sure what was going on but on average it scores a little bit slower. That shouldn't happen and the 14700K should be faster and somewhere around the 3900K kind of territory but for some reason that's how it performs. 
Bear in mind, I'm using Future Pinch 0.931 and the Winter Resolve 18.6 for these tests here. Let's move on and look at the standard overall score. And here things change a little bit. Now, the 4900K is on top of the charts. All of the i9s are better than any of the Threadrippers. Threadripper is still faster than any of the other CPUs, i7s and below. Interestingly, the Ryzen 9 7950X, which is a 16 core CPU, and the 8 core CPU perform literally within margin of error. Like within 1%, we've got the 7700X, 7900X, and 7950X, which is just interesting. So the middle pack of the CPUs, they all perform the same. 14600K, 700K, 12900K, 13600K, and all of these Ryzen CPUs. They're about the same, which is interesting. The 64 core, interestingly, is a bit further down. So these are the overall scores. But that's not all. Maybe you don't need 8K media or you're not working with RAW, then the 4K media score is perhaps most relevant for you. A quick message from today's video sponsor, Motion Array. Motion Array is an unlimited marketplace for all your video needs. You know the ones that you don't have time to make but would love to use. All the nice titles and intros and lower thirds, effects and motion graphics, even stock video and photo. There are over 40 plugins available for Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, After Effects, Final Cut Pro, Motion, Vegas Pro and Arvid Media Composer. It's membership based, one fee and unlimited downloads. Use whenever and whatever. No more copyright strikes and a peace of mind. Their website is extremely easy to use. You'll find exactly what you're looking for. Try it out and you'll know what I'm talking about. But now they even have extensions available for Adobe software. So get all the assets within the software without even leaving your editor. If you're not sure about Motion Array, check out their hundreds of free assets through the links in the description below. And if you sign up for the annual plan, the links down below will provide you extra $50 discount. Just a little addition, we've been using Motion Array now for a little while and one of our favorite features is the integration with Premiere Pro. This is one of the best discoveries we've found on our workflow for years. Just the way all of the assets are available there in Premiere Pro and whenever you download something it just comes to your project folder and everything's organized already. You don't have to go online and download something and then move the files. This will save time and actually makes us more creative and using a lot more of the assets just because the ease of use. By the way, Motion Arrow just added about 50 new really cool plugins for your editing software to power up your editing workflow. We've been using the film grain effect and really enjoying it. It's so easy to use and add cool effects to your final edit. And there's more plugins coming and these are available for After Effects, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut. So go check out Motion Array through the links in the description below. Thank you again, Motion Array for sponsoring this video. The top of the chart is the Threadripper 7970X, which is 1.1% faster than the 14900K. Now, it is faster, but as you can see, it's uh, probably not worth it. At the same time, the test bench is using RTX 1390 for this, and most likely were GPU bottleneck than CPU bottleneck in this format. We could have used something else that's much more powerful, like a 1490, then we might have seen a bit of a difference in here. But most people, most likely, are not gonna have the best GPU for this scenario so here we can see kind of a previous top end GPU and what are the CPUs doing here. Another thing that I'm picking up from this chart is that there is not that big of a difference in 4k media score between like the 13600k which is kind of the bottom of the middle pack there and the fastest one there's about 8% which you're really not going to see the difference between 8% and most likely you're maybe worth upgrading something else, but that makes these lower end CPUs like the 13600K and 12600K very, very appealing because they're just so, so fast. The 14600K as well, very interesting just because we get a very good IMC with it. I know it's only 6P cores, but it's, it's worth it. Also, the Intel CPUs have an iGPU, which you might be able to utilize when decoding certain media in there that Ryzen can't quite give you and Threadripper neither. Let's move on to 8K media score. So this is where we're testing 8K H.265 and 8K Red Raw as well. So if you're using large 
files like that or large media files a bit more complex timelines kind of thing then we can see which one is the best again threadripper 7970x is on top of the charts now it's really within margin of error of the 14900k so kind of doesn't look like it makes sense to go with that one the middle pack is also very very close we can see that all the way down to 14600k there is about seven percent difference between the best and the 14600K. All the other CPUs lying in between, not that big of a difference. The Ryzen 7 7700X and 7950X and 7900X, again, within one to 1.5% 1 of each other, doesn't make that much of a sense difference. The six core Ryzen 5 7600X is further down below so you can see that getting eight cores to eight 16 cores in the range resolve really doesn't make that much of a difference in 8k media scores i'd say i would still go with 7900x or 7950x because of the more cores and if you do in other bits on the pc they start to become on top but it's an interesting analysis you can see there's about four percent or four five percent between the 13600k and 7980x which shows that the i5 is better than a 64 core thread ripper that's about 20 times the price point that's quite insane the bottom pack all performed the same about 12600k 12700k and the thread ripper 7980x again i'd say you you're most likely going to be GPU bottleneck than CPU bottleneck and getting any of the i9s from Intel is quite a good option there. And also the Ryzen CPUs because this is the first generation Ryzen CPUs for that platform. So the next Ryzen 9 um, 9950X for example will most likely be on top of the charts here outperforming any of these which is good news for those who have invested into the Ryzen platform and are banking for the future upgrades. Now what about GPU effect score? So here we're seeing which CPU actually gives the most kind of freedom for the GPU to do its effects. And interestingly, the top two are a lot higher than any of the rest of the ones here. You can see that the 14900K with 6400 megatransfers per second and the 7970X, they almost seem like a bit of a fluke in terms of results, but these are the average of about five plus tests, which you can see here. That's quite interesting. So for some reason, when you've got fast RAM for the GPU effects, because the 7970X is actually using 6,000 or 6,400 megatransfers RAM as well, which is very, very fast. You can see the faster RAM does make a big difference in GPU effects scores, the way the program or the software utilizes this compared to the 14900K that only has 5600 megatransfers per second. Bear in mind, all of the Ryzen and Intel CPUs, Ryzen 7000 and Intel CPUs, they're using the same RAM kit, just the different RAM speeds. So the timings are exactly the same. And when I'm on Ryzen system, I'm using the export and on Intel XMP. Again, the i9s from Intel perform very, very strongly. And interestingly, the 12 core Ryzen 9 is faster than the 16 core fast the Ryzen 9, even though the 7950X should have faster single core performance, but perhaps the software doesn't quite know which one is the faster score, and that's why we're getting the GPU score a bit lower. From Ryzen 7700X, which is 30% slower than the 7970X Threadripper, you can see we're starting to kind of go down quite fast the chart starts to ramp down a little bit faster interestingly the 12600k on the bottom there doesn't quite like this but you could boost that performance if you had faster memory but you can see that the faster memory and lower core count actually puts it on the bottom of the chart. So if you're doing a lot of GPU effects these CPUs are the best ones to get. And now let's look at fusion scores which is basically you know Blackmagic's version of After Effects. Here there is three top charts there is the 14900K with fast memory and the Threadripper 7970X that are above the rest of the pack. 14900K is about 13 or 12, 13% faster than the 13900K and you get extra 5% performance when going with fast RAM and then a little bit more when we go in with 32 cores. But the rest of the pack you can see are very, very similar. The 12600K all the way to 13900k there is about six percent difference which is really not noticeable so when you're using fusion you're most likely going to be gpu bottlenecked then cpu bottlenecked and you can see having a fast ram makes a difference the fast single core makes a difference but really the performance in between all of these looks very very similar especially the high-end ryzen 9s and 7 that looks about the same. Now, the other thing you might be saying is what about some of the other CPUs like the X3D from Ryzen? 
And I would say that honestly, the X3D chips, they're not worth getting. And that's why I haven't made a ton of content on it because Matt from Beauty Systems has done a great article on it. And you can see in there those results that the X3D chips are about the same as the non-3D Vcash variants. In fact, often slower. There's only very minimal cases where it's faster and that the X3D is more expensive. So for creators, really those chips don't make sense. What about the non-K CPUs from Intel? I highly recommend checking out any of my reviews and there you can see where these would line up because I think most of the non-K CPUs I have actually tested on the channel. So find those CPU reviews and there you can get my answer. They perform very similar to the K CPUs if you're using the Z platform where the motherboard can actually unlock all of these you know, performances. But if you're using a B chipset and you just have to use a lower TDP and so on, then you're going to start to lose performance. The other option is the AMD non-X CPUs. These ones actually kind of make sense if you're using the PBO because you can get the same CPU performance as the X variant, but just a little bit cheaper, enabling PBO, and then it performs within margin of error of the actual X variant. So they are good options to get for. I'm going to try to leave those in the description below as well. Now, what about the Xeon? Because you showed this, but didn't actually show any of the results in here. Honestly, this guy is a, a little bit of a, a no-go for this year. I don't think there is no person on planet Earth that actually uses these Xeons for this DaVinci Resolve. It just doesn't make any sense. The price point that you get paying for this, over four grand for this slab of silicon and sand, uh, it's not worth in, in there. The 4900K is going to be so much better. So don't buy this one if, you, if, you, if you're uh, doing DaVinci Resolve. But what you should be doing is checking out all the links in the description below if you want to pick any of these up or build yourself the best bank robot creator PC. There's build guides in there if you're new to the channel. If you have any specific questions, reach out on Minect in the description below. I want to say a big thank you to Motion Array for sponsoring this video. Go check them out through the links in the description below. They've got an awesome product, awesome service, affordable prices, and honestly, just go check them out. And if you sign up through the links through the description below, there is an extra $50 discount for those annual subscription plans. Go check them out.